Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Indeed, it is a wonderful thing to be in the house of the Lord. What do you say? Amen. All right, so welcome to another song service. We're going to lift our voice this morning. Let us sing. Let's sing it to the Lord. Our first song this morning will be Praise Him, Praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing on earth his wonderful love proclaim. Bring my 
Our next song will be He's Wonderful. Sing the spirit of the living God. Thank you all.
Heavenly Father, we won't be rude in your house by asking you to come into a place where you already dwell. But what we will do is thank you for allowing us to meet you here. We want to thank you for the privilege and honor to call ourselves your children. We want to thank you for your graciousness and your mercy to us. Lord, we want to hear you. We want to be in your presence as long as we can. So allow our hearts to be open to your presence here. And again, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me one more time? And you thought you were going to stay seated. Amen. This is Worship Revival Weekend. Amen. If you're visiting us today, you came at an opportune time. Jesus wanted you here to get your soul on fire. So we're going to sing our opening hymn, 43, When Morning Gilds the Skies. Believe it or not, Pastor Reed was the first person who introduced me to this one. And so it was. So let's sing together as we uh, sing this song. Singing. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries. May Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair. May Jesus Christ be praised. Whene'er the sweet church bell peals over hill and dell, May Jesus Christ be praised. Oh, hark to what it sings as joyously it rings. May who? May Jesus Christ be praised. The night becomes as day when from the heart we say, let me hear you. Christ be praised, the powers of darkness fear, when this sweet chant they hear, may Jesus Christ be praised. Ye nations of mankind, in this your conquered find, may Jesus Christ be praised. sound. May Jesus Christ be praised. In heaven's eternal bliss, the loveliest strain is this. May Jesus Christ be praised. Let earth and sea and sky from deck to height reply. May Jesus Christ be praised. This while life is mine, my cantic hold divine. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this eternal song through all the ages long. One more time, let me hear it. Christ be praised. Amen. How many, that was the first time you've ever sang this one before. Pretty amazing, isn't it? And yet there's so many other songs that praise our Lord that we can learn. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you.
It's time for our children's story. So if all of our little ones would come up and grab a bucket. And we as a congregation are going to raise our arms in praise and we're going to put green dollar bills in those buckets. All of the proceeds from our offering at this time go to help our church school and its needs. I heard some rumor that there's up to 40 students coming next year. That means the church is going to have to dig a little deeper, but they're worth it. We're waiting. Hear that money pulling out? No. Don't go anywhere, Elias. Where you gonna go, bro? Well, good. Well, good morning. Oh, no, that was weak. Good morning. All right. See, those are the little children and the big children that heard, right? How many of you have ever heard of a baboon? It is a monkey that lives in Africa. I think we might have a picture, baby, of a... Oh, you ever seen? Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> they look special, don't they? Uh-huh. Yeah, those are baboons. Yeah, I don't know I want to pet one. That's not one of those monkeys. I went to Monkey Island one time in the Amazon in Peru. And I had all these monkeys running around and doing weird things. And one monkey got on top of me, opened his mouth, and put his mouth right on my neck. And I went, didn't move an inch. And the owner of Monkey Island was looking at me like, oh, he's nice. I'm like, yeah, uh -huh. he looks real nice. But here we go. So then I look at these guys who were not the kind of monkeys I was around. And I go, oh. I don't know about that. But you know something cool about them? Just like many of these primates, do you know they travel as a family? Do you know what we call a family of baboons? Does anybody know? Oh, I heard that. A troop. A family of baboons is known as a troop. Now, there was a scientist one time who was out in the forest, out in the jungle, and he was observing a troop of baboons. He was watching them as they were climbing this cliff up a mountain. 
while he was watching them take care of each other, watch over their family, going up that cliff together, guess what? He noticed another animal watching them. He saw a leopard. You know what a leopard is? What is it, Elias? Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, man. He was watching, and you know when he was watching them baboons, you know what he was thinking, right? It's, it's supper time. Now, the scientist is watching because this leopard is getting closer and closer and closer. And if you know anything about wild cats, when they're getting close to their prey, they're creeping. They're creeping closer and closer because guess what they're ready to do when they get close enough? They're going to pounce, right? And go after their prey and run. And leopards are fast, all right? They are fast animals. And so he was watching this leopard eye out this troop of baboons. And he's getting closer and creeping and creeping and creeping. But the scientist noticed something else. Now, the leopard is a way bigger animal than a baboon. But he noticed that while the troop was going up the cliff, three other baboons noticed that leopard. And so while the family was going up the cliff, they took a turn and they went another way. And while the leopard's concentration was on this family of baboons, he never noticed the three that were watching him. So the scientist watches, and a good scientist just lets nature take its course. And so the leopard gets closer. The baboons are watching, and they're getting closer to him, and the leopard's getting closer. And then all of a sudden, the leopard's about to make his move, and the three baboons jumped right on him. Ah! And they started fighting. One grabbed him in the back of the neck and started pulling away. Another one grabbed him at the bottom, and another one was on top. And I mean, this was a wrestling match. I mean, they took that leopard to town. Guess what, though? You think the baboons were able to survive that fight? The scientists watched as they gave their everything, and the leopard within just a minute or so, took out all three of them. All three of them died. But watch this. That wasn't the end of the story. You see, the scientist was watching. You see, though those three baboons were laid dead, the leopard could no longer move as he wanted to anymore. He got up, he started to stagger, and eventually he dropped down and he died himself. You see, those three baboons, knowing they were up against something larger than them, they gave their lives to save their troop, their family. And because of their sacrifice, the entire troop of baboons continued up the cliff, not even realizing what had taken place. And you know, there's an amazing verse in scripture. John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You imagine that? And you know the one who laid down his life for his friends? His name is Jesus. He went to the cross and he allowed those nails to enter his hands and his feet. He bled and died. And all the while on that cross, he was thinking of you his family because for jesus he knows those who will accept him in his life and what he's done and his desire is to make sure that you have every opportunity to live forever 
That's why he gave his life. He made the ultimate sacrifice because he wants you to know he's not just your creator. He's not just your daddy and your king. He's also your friend if you want him to be. That's the greatest description of love. And so I want you to remember as you're thinking about what Jesus on the cross did for you, he made the ultimate sacrifice. Will you say yes to Jesus and say, I want to accept Jesus' sacrifice in my life? Will you say that to him? I want that sacrifice. And I want to be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice for others. Which one of you will pray for me this morning? Come on up. Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, and let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for everything you have done for us. You have blessed us so many times, and you take care of us every single day. Please bless everyone, and please bless everyone where they go. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You may go back to your seats now. that help in our worship service when we when I have called you or when BC has called you and asked you to participate and you've stepped up I really really appreciate that worship is all about God and our love for him and I thank you for your love for him Nancy is not Elizabeth but Nancy was scheduled last week and she was home nursing a sick person how hard it is to nurse a, a stubborn person. <laughs> he really wasn't too sick. He just was tested positive. Um, this morning, <laughs> could have been negative. But <laughs> when I was a little girl and in Sabbath school, and yes, children, I was a little girl one time. Um, when we would have prayer in Sabbath school, I would always pray for the missionaries and the call porters. Every Sabbath, it was always, please bless the missionaries and the call porters. And, I, you know, I never, I thought about that. Those are people that served in other countries, far lands far away. Call porters, you know, sold books at home. Past, Pastor Pete, um, Elder Pete was a, a call porter. So I prayed for you when I was a child. <laughs> but you weren't a call porter yet. <laughs> but you know what? As I got older, I realized that we are all missionaries. Every one of us is a missionary, even if it's just to the person that lives next door to us. So, and this weekend, we are learning about and studying about being revived and, and fulfilling the call that God has given to each one of us, and that is to be a missionary, to be a witness for him. So this morning, as we kneel and as we sing our cares chorus, Let's remember that God has a work for each one of us to do and ask that he bless us in that. Let's kneel together as we sing our cares chorus. loving Heavenly Father, how good it is to be here this morning in your presence again to worship you and to thank you and to praise you for all that you have done for us. Not just this week, Father, but throughout our entire lives as you have guided us by your Holy Spirit. 
And this morning we ask for a greater outpouring of your Holy Spirit in our lives, that we will receive the fruit of the Spirit, that we will receive the power and the strength to go forward as the missionaries that you have commissioned us to be, to go into all the world, even if it's just next door. And Father, we know that you will do this because this is the work you have called us to do. And we want each one to be willing. And Father, if we're not willing, then I ask that you will make us willing to be made willing. And that we will accept the call that you have given to us. This morning, we want to remember those in our midst that may still be struggling with illnesses, disabilities, that you would bring healing to their bodies. But more than anything else, Father, I pray that you will bring spiritual healing to each one of us and that we will be revived and that you will bless our speaker this morning as he brings to us these precious words that will stir in our hearts the message that you have to give to each one of us that we will not be comfortable sitting in our chairs and our pews anymore, but that we will get up and go to work for you. The time is short. We know that it won't be long before Jesus comes back. And Father, I want each one of my brothers and sisters here in this room this morning and all of our brothers and sisters around the world to have that opportunity to be ready to go home and that we will have shared it with our friends and our neighbors and our family members that they too will have that opportunity to go home. Help us not to shirk our duties. Help us not to um, choose to follow the ways of the world, but that we will choose your way. And walk upon the path that you have chosen for us to walk. And that we will do it without grumbling and complaining. And we will do it with the last breath of our body if that is needed, Father. Just take us home. Prepare us to go home. And we thank you and we praise you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. know how to catch a monkey I often wondered about it because they're often up in the trees and we're on the ground you catch a monkey by taking a coconut or something like that and making a hole just large enough in it that the monkey can reach in and grab what you put inside and the monkey won't let loose of what's inside and a closed hand is larger than an open hand we all carry purses and billfolds, and they're closed. And Satan this morning is asking us to keep them closed, and God is saying, what have I done for you? The morning offering is for Hope Channel. I don't know about you, but on Friday evenings, I often turn my television set on, and I'll go to YouTube, on my Roku, I just go up to Hope Channel and click on it and watch the Sabbath School discussion. There's about five or six Sabbath School discussions going on, and by the time it's done, I've learned quite a lot. And I hope that you'll take advantage of that. Ross was a drug addict. When he found his wife was pregnant, he decided that he needed to give up his drugs. And he became a recovering drug addict. If you've ever been to any of the drug recovery centers and talked to them, you're never free of the habit. Went to celebration recovery one day and the lady stood up and she says, hello, my name is, I'm a recovering addict from chocolate. And I thought, now that's unique, I like chocolate. I like it a lot. But that which consumes our money so that we can't help causes that God has for us to contribute to is an addiction. And we're all caught. We all get caught with the idea that Jesus' coming is a long ways off. And it's even at the door. This heartbeat is the only one you're guaranteed. This breath of life is the only one that you may ever have. It's time to do what you can for God's cause. It's time to let loose of the stuff in the coconut 
and help God's cause advance. This drug addict had a little girl. She had in a disease called aurora of brachial plexus injury at birth. And she was healed after the man who became an Adventist pastor, the drug addict, sent his prayer request into Hope. And the Hope family started praying for her. Now, I was looking last night at the subject of prayer. And I was intrigued that Psychology Today ran an article on prayer. And they could not figure out how a person who did not pray was healed by the prayers of other people. You know how that happens, don't you? And today, we're hoping that you'll reignite yourself with that prayer time. As the deacons ushers come forward, would you release what's in the coconut and put it in the offering plate and help God's cause go forward? Almighty Father, we, we've been trained by the world around us. We've been pressed into its mold. We've been taught that the more dollars we hang on to, the better and the more important we are. But within your family that we were born into, we're being taught that it's that which we give up that is counted as riches in heaven. May we surrender today that that you have given to us so that your mission can be accomplished and we can go home soon. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Today's scripture is found in Jeremiah 10, 6. And as much as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great and your name is great in might. Before I invite our praise team to, as they're coming up, rather, you might come up as it is, we're going to sing our theme song for this weekend, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. And after they're done leading us in song, we have our guest speaker who's been with us since last night, Pastor Reed. I don't know how many of you were blessed last night. I see a lot of you watched. There was a lot of you online who watched, and we welcome you here this morning as well. Uh, and I see some liking and subscribe. So I'm going to tell you again, like and subscribe. All the videos you see go up. All right? Share it. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Let it be a blessing. Last night, we were blessed in being reminded we need to be in Jesus and not just in proximity of Jesus. Amen? We need to be in Jesus. 
For those of you who are visiting us this morning, Pastor James Reed is the chaplain and Bible teacher of Pine Tree Academy in Maine. And he's been doing that, I don't know, almost what, six, eight years now? Something of that nature. And uh, it has been a blessing to journey with him in this work. I cannot wait, and I can tell this to uh, Pastor Reed, I cannot wait till you and I get to put down these suits and listen to Jesus one day and let him preach his sermon. Amen. But until then, we're privileged to be a part of that. And so after we sing our theme song, uh, I present to you my brother and my friend, Pastor James Reed, and may his words be the words from on high. Please stand. Please stand.
Good Sabbath morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning outside. It's a lovely day to be alive. And we are in the house of prayer for all people. We are in an experience in a nation where we still have the privileges to say the most wonderful name that has ever been uttered off of the lips. And his name is Jesus. And I want to give a quick, a quick update. You may see me get emotional in a sermon like today, and there are a few reasons why, but the main reason why is because I have met my Lord and Savior. And I don't say that lightly. I was on a road to hell with gasoline draws on. And the Lord saved me. And so when I get the privilege to lift him up, it is my greatest privilege to speak of the one who's loved me like no one else has ever done. And so if, if I get a little carried away or beside myself, I would hope that you would forgive me. I'm just in love with him. I'm going to try to hold back because it can get a little ugly all up in here. So I'm looking for the tissues because today I'm preaching this sermon for the first time. This series has not been done anywhere else because, as I said last night, it was around October that these messages started to come to me as I was wrestling with the Lord over things that had been said by, by all of us as I have grown up in the Christian church. Before I continue, I want us to go to our loving Savior in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's in Jesus' name that I come before you. It's in Jesus' name that I adore because he is my wonderful, merciful Savior. I love the fact, Father, that you sit on a seat called mercy. I love the fact that you raise dead people to eternal life. But Lord, as I stand here behind the sacred desk, the people don't want to hear me. They want to hear you. And so I need you to do a special work and allow me just to be a conduit and an open vessel Cleanse my heart from any unrighteousness because I want you to let loose with all your love, with all your word that you can, that you can get through and lift high the cross so we can live resurrected in Jesus' name. Amen. There are habits that we learn when we are growing up, and some habits some of you grew up with just like I did. Some of you were taught when you were in front or beside of your bed at night that you would say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Thank you very much. And there was one that my sisters were taught when before I was born, but I don't. It, and I know it was something about the food. By his hands, we all are fed. We thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. So I used to hear my sister say that, and I used to wonder, how come I didn't get taught that one? So my parents, I, I, again, I was a surprise baby. So there were some things that they didn't do anymore. They didn't forget that belt, though. They really didn't. But we learn things in Christian culture, good things. Should our parents teach us how to pray? Of course they should. And when a kid is this tiny, they don't need a, solilo a soliloquy. Father God, who reigneth on high with justice and mercy and peace, be it thou, be it the love of... No, they don't. 
we teach them simple bite-sized prayers to teach them that they can do it, to teach them that it is possible to communicate no matter how young you are with your Savior. But one of the issues is, is that by the time that you're 30, 20, even gay, 15, the prayer should be a little bit different. Because now you've been walking in Jesus. You have been walking with your Savior. And even though you've fallen in potholes, he's the one who's picked you up, right? He's the one who's dusted you off and allowed you to be in this moment that you are in right now. And so the prayer life that you had when you were six needs to look different and feel different when you're 66, 56, 46, 36. But some of us are still laying on the power of now I lay me down to sleep. And we've never awakened to the fact that there is a name that is above every name. That demons start to tremble when they hear his name. That hearts are changed when they hear that name. That people go from death to life when they hear that name. And when we say the name, there is a reverence that we should have. Because when we say names, it is not just about a title. And so what happens is, listen to what I'm saying and don't assume what I'm saying. What happens is our prayers become incantations. So if for those of you who don't know what that word is, maybe you're little and you don't know what incantations are, I'm going to read to you two definitions. One's from Merriam-Webster and one is from Britannica. I'll start with Merriam-Webster. Use of spells or verbal charms spoken or sung as a part of a ritual of magic. And from Britannica, a series of words used to make something magic happen. And so we throw in things with our prayers like an abracadabra. And then we get upset when we don't see anything. Because we have been taught to do incantations and we have not grown as much as we should. Last night, we talked about the importance of being in Jesus. This series is about upgrading. I don't want my prayers to be incantations like I'm some over some cauldron. (laughs) Putting cinnamon and chicken bones and stuff like that. No, that's not how my God operates. He is power. He is strength. And he is love. How do I know so? Because first John told me so. And the word of God was inspired by him. He is power. He is not someone we manipulate to get what we want. When we pray, we don't just pray for what we want. We're putting God over what we want. We are prioritizing what is the most important thing. Today, the title, I gave it to your pastor wrong. It looks like an acronym. I was sleepy when he asked me. It's actually just name. In Jesus was last night, name right now. And tonight at 6.30, 6, 6, 6 o'clock, 6. Let me put another 6 in there. Oh, my goodness. Mm-mm. At 6 o'clock. The title of the message is Amen. There is power in a name. And and we know this. Many people, when they were growing up, their parents or grandparents taught them, when you leave this house, it's not about you. You're a Johnson. You're a Wilson. You're a Bettany. And act like it. And what did that mean? that you and your family did not act and operate like the Goyim, like the Gentiles or the Canaanites at school. You were to carry yourself like you were somebody. 
like you had a parent that cared about you and trained you and told you how to say, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. And parents, that is not child abuse. Commercial, all right? When you put respect on people's name, I need everyone under the age of 45 to listen. When you put respect on other people's name, it gives you an inroad to witness and represent your father in heaven. It's not just about your family at home. It's about your family at home. And you are showing them who you are. It's simple. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Please and thank you. And pardon me. All right. That, I got to take my teacher hat off. We are to go out into the world, not as people who hope that our God will hear us. And how our Savior must feel when we get down on our knees and we pray as if we have to wish that God will hear us. I don't speak of something that I have not done. I know what that's like. Well, God, if you just, uh, well, I know you love me, Lord, and I know I've, I've done wrong. I know I haven't said good things, and I know I haven't. You, you've been there in your life with the Lord. You need something from him, and you start hemming and hawing on your knees. Or you could have been taught to overdo it, that you had to tell God what to do really hard. Father God, Jesus, I tell you that I need you to come through, God. I want you to do this. Who are you talking to? We don't tell him to do anything. When I'm in his presence, I'm bowed in worship and humbled. I'm bold, but I'm not ridiculous. Reverence is a state of mind. A lot of us think it has to do with volume, but it's a state of the mind and heart. We know who we're talking to when we're in the posture of prayer. And so as we come boldly, we come with a fear, a fear knowing that I'm recognizing your status because that's another thing that a name is. It represents your status. In some countries, your name actually tells people where in the social caste system you are. And if you have some sort of name, you are relegated to cleaning latrines with your very hands. There was one gentleman, because he was of a lower caste system of which his name had, he's a very popular person, I'll tell you about the book later if you want to know, that he had to take his classes in school on the floor in the back of the room. Not allowed to get water from the faucet. Not here in the United States of America, this is another country. Because his name represented that he was not good enough. But I serve a God whose name is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord, Master. Turn with me to the Gospel of John. John chapter 1. When you are upgrading your prayers, we are reminded that we are to be in Jesus, but we are also in his name. There are so many things that we can talk about in the power of his name. And the word in the Hebrew represents a good and Greek. I'm going to give you the, um, the definitions. It's your fame. It's glory. It's your reputation, its status, its memorial, a monument, as it were. So it's not just something that we throw on a wall like 
buckshot that just sprays everywhere, hoping that Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit will hear us know this name represents who, how, what, all together. John chapter 1. And I want to start where we mentioned last night, just a little bit. We were in another chapter, but I mentioned verse 10 of chapter 1, and it says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. So the name of Jesus, he, Jesus is the one who created us. We talked about this last night. And 11, he came to his own and his own did not what? His own did not receive him. So he came to us. He did not just get close. He actually came to us. His feet touched planet Earth. He walked on actual ground on in our planet, rubbed shoulders with real human beings. These are not stories and fairy tales. That's why there are very few characters in Scripture. These are historical figures. Lazarus, and in certain um, parables, like the woman who was sweeping her house, she's a character. Jesus is a historical figure, but he's present. He's present before the Father today. Continuing in verse 12, but as many as what? Received him. To them he did what? He what? He gave the right to become children of God. To those who did what? Believe in what? Ah. We as American citizens, we love rights, don't we? You talk to us now in 2024, all up and through November, we are going to hear conversations about rights. And I'm already tired of it. Keep telling you, no man or woman is going to save you. From 2024, he already came, and he's in glory, and he's preparing a place for you. Stop looking at human beings to fix your problems. There is power in the name. That's what we as Christians are here to do, to glorify the name. But we cannot glorify a name that we have not received. Because we have been praying like the six-year-old who's learning the process. And so one of the things I love about the Seventh-day Adventist Church is one of our things that we are very passionate about is growing in Christ. So we just don't say saplings. We grow. And of course, the Lord has to snip. And so today, I want you to think about how can I start to receive the name? Why? Because there's a benefit that the Lord placed in receiving his name. We have a right to become what? Children of God. And children are part of the family, aren't they? They're very important part of the family. Children allow for the name of the family to continue. Pay attention to where we are. Those of us who are surprises, we didn't understand this. When you have a child, it guarantees that someone with that name will continue. Even if it's a girl, she may choose to change her last name, but she's still part of the family. And so reproduction it is not just fun and games. It is making sure that the family line continues. And when the creator got down on his hands and knees, he wasn't playing games in the dirt. He was starting a family of a kingdom that never ends. 
an unshakable kingdom that cannot be busted. He saw you walking in downtown Earth 2.0 on streets of gold. And so now the angels are buffing off your apartment in downtown. But in order to receive the key to my apartment, I've got to receive the name. It's not an incantation. It is a status symbol on who my creator is. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Can't nobody touch me when I'm in the name. Maybe I have been struggling with fear and anxiety, frustration and anger because I don't just get in Jesus by just singing the word. No, I've got to be in him and I'm in the name. The name of Jesus, the everlasting name. That Lord, that Savior. And when I call him Lord, I am submitting to him as my master, which means he has the right to tell me what to do. He gives me the right to be a part of his family. Oh, I feel another commercial coming on. <laughs> See, this is why chores are extremely important. What did I say? Everybody in the house does chores, right? Some of our chores are actually outside of the house, right? We go to work, we clock in. That's a chore. It, it helps the house actually get the rent paid and the mortgage paid, right? Right? That's, that's some of our chores. Some of us do our chores in an office. Some of us do our chores on the top of, a, of the roof of a house. Not all chores are done inside. This is what some kids don't always understand. Because a lot of kids, their chores are inside the house. All right? But when you have a family, we divvy up the chores and the responsibilities, right? Because we're all a part of the what? We're all a part of the family. So we all have different tasks to make sure the house, the place where we dwell, runs smoothly and it smells good and not like garbage. That we do things that make sure we don't have ants running around the place. That when people drive up to our home, that it looks like God loves someone who lives in the house. You know, this is why it is important. This is why someone does the laundry. This is why someone takes out the trash. And it's just like that, parents. Amen. Oh, yes, it's just like that in the kingdom of God. Yeah, I knew that wasn't going to get all the amens. Because, again, some of our chores are not inside the house. We, we, we don't have the keys yet to our apartments in downtown glory in our 2.0. But we have work to do. And in order to do our chores, we must be in the name of Jesus. We have to remember who we are. We aren't just anybody. We are children of a king. I want you to think about that because John has been inspired here by the Holy Ghost to, to remind us that as many as received his name, as many as received his name, they get the right to become a child of God. Privileges can be taken away. A right is something that you always have. We get that mixed up when we are addicted to our culture. That means when I'm with Jesus and I stay in Christ, that no one can rip me out of his hand. So when I pray in the name of Jesus, I can come boldly before the throne of grace because he has me in his powerful grip. And he doesn't drop anything. I'm secure in the name of Jesus.
I am held safe by the name of Jesus. It's not just a title. It's who he is. I want us to turn to John chapter 20. Not only is there power in his name, but I also must believe. Belief will actually show you whether or not you know that what you ask for in his name will be so. I want to read to you a little quote that I found. It says, this name is hallowed by the angels of heaven, by the inhabitants of unfallen worlds. When you pray, hallowed be thy name, you ask that it may be hallowed in this world, hallowed in you. God has acknowledged you before men and angels as his child. Pray that you may do no dishonor to the worthy name which you are called. God sends you into this world as his representative. In every act of life, you are to make manifest the name of God. This petition calls upon you to possess his character. You cannot hallow his name. You cannot represent him to the world unless in life and character you represent the very life and character of God. This you can do only through acceptance of the grace and righteousness of Christ. So I can do it by accepting the grace and the righteousness. I have to receive it. How many gifts are left under a tree on Christmas morning? Typically none. Nothing is left but wrapping paper. But what about the gifts that God has given you and I? How many unwrapped gifts are there because we haven't yet received the name? One of the other things that a name represents is authority. So it's not just status, it's not just power, it's the authority that he has. So he has the ability, the, the ability and the permission to do his great work within me and in you because of his authority. In verse 30 and 31 of John chapter 20, it says this, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may what? What's that word? Believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life where? You may have life where? So in Jesus' name, I believe and I have what? No, not existence. Life eternal. So my death is not a period. It's a pause. It's just asleep. So they may try to take me out, but they won't ever stop me because I believe in the name of Jesus. And no matter what they do, I'm not going to stop living in the name. And I know that's what you are called to do because you're here. 
That is what you are called to do, to live in the name and glorify his name in everything you say and everything you do. One of the things that my father did a very good job in instilling in me is the idea of, I don't care what they tell you to do, you need to worry about me. I don't care what happens out there, you need to worry about what happens when you come back here. And I saw him teach my siblings the same lesson. And so while I did my best to follow and not receive some of the marks that they received, I sometimes failed those tests. And my father explained before he would go into his mode, and my mother was worse than him, by the way. Mom, if you're watching, I'm sorry, I have to tell the truth. We've discussed it. But my mom had a heavier hand than my dad. It was real heavy, mom. I still actually have one of my um, battle scars. But my parents wanted to remind me who I was. And so when I got out of pocket, they decided to do a couple of things. My parents actually did a verbal warning. Notice there was no S on the end of that. They did a verbal warning. That's what you do. The Lord does that to us, right? He gives us his law. We have rails, right? If you're riding on a bridge, you don't want to be on a bridge that has no rails, right? Right? Why? You could fall out. You know, there's some driver who's on their phone or something and you have to swerve. And if there's no rail on the side, no barricade on the side of the bridge, you don't want to do what? Fall off. And so what happens is the enemy says the name is too restrictive. You don't get to do what you want. No, I can do whatever I want and I can also fall off bridges. The guardrail doesn't stop you from jumping over the guardrail, does it? But it provides what? Come on, it provides a way to stay safe. It's, it gives you a visual as to these are the parameters in which to stay. But yet the enemy who steals, kills, and destroy says, you don't want barriers in your life. Why would you want barriers on your bridge? And you know what? It sounds silly, but we believe them. So who's the silly one? You know, I would be a Christian, but, you know, I just don't like those guardrails that you got. Tell me what I can't do. Okay, fine. If you want to go swimming with sharks, sayonara. I got some barbecue sauce for you. They'll have a good meal. Why is it that we have fallen for the lies, even though we know what happened. We complain about the situation we're in, and we look at Adam and Eve and say, how come they did that? And then we repeat the same behavior because we're not abiding in the name. We are forgetting who we are, just like they did. You will not surely die. Okay. How's that working for you? When you get up off your knees, do you know that God heard you and you know that he's working on it? And do you live like it? About 20 months ago, I drove into the back of Pine Tree Academy where uh, half of the teachers park. And I was having a conversation with the Lord as I typically do before I walk into the building. And the conversation was about my automobile issues. 
I'm talking about prayer and I'm talking about power in the name. These were the words that I said in my frustration to my father. I'm going to try to get them exactly the way I said it. Lord, and I remember I was looking up there and I was like, I'm so, I'm, I don't even know what to pray anymore because I'm tired of putting money into this car. It's old. I'm not asking you for something brand new. I know you don't just give people brand new cars for free. I just want something that I don't have to fix every month. I can't afford it. Every time the savings gets up, it goes back down. This is how, Lord, I just, I'm done. First of all, who am I? You see, I get, sometimes I just get beside myself when I'm talking to him. But I'm also talking to someone who I was told that I can talk to as a friend. So I, you know, I, I struggle because I, I want to keep it real with it because he already knows what I feel anyway. I need to hear myself say it. So the Lord seemingly was like, okay, <laughs> all right, go to work. So I was done. I was like, I, 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 can't, I can't deal with this anymore. I guess I'll just have to keep dumping more money, more money, more money. Now, some people will say, well, why don't you just get a car loan? Well, my car loan was spent on some college degrees that the Lord did not tell me to get. So, um, yeah, I can't do that. The disobedience monkey is just laughing at me. That's the baboon in my life. Last September, I get a text message in the second to last period of the day from the school secretary. Hey, do you want a car? Ha, ha, ha. No, I'm serious. Do you want a car? Why is she asking me dumb questions? Sure. Well, you can have a Toyota. It's old, but it doesn't have a lot of miles on it. So now I'm like, maybe this is, what is she talking about? So I go down to the office, and I'm, just, I'm like, Mrs. Glover, what are, what are you talking about? She was like, well, my husband's best friend was asking everybody in the family if they wanted a car, and everybody turned it down. And I told him that our Bible teacher chaplain was always having car issues, and are they willing to give it to you? And they said, sure. I was like, well, since I'm Captain Moneybags over here, how much do they want for it? They're like, no, 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 they just want to give it to you. What? No, they want to give it to you. So I'm that I need to text them back if you want it. So now I'm like, I, I do have vivid dreams. So I'm like, this is not a really fun dream to be having. Who has to work a full day shift in their whole dream? I'm like, it's been a long day, and this dream has been very long, and now. It's this joke that I'm going to get a brand new car for free. I'm like, I really need to wake up. Mrs. Glover looked at me. Do, I need to, can, what, do you want the car? I'm like, yes. She's like, okay. I'm texting them. And I said, Are, is this really happening? She says, yes, Pastor Reed. I'll send you the text chain that they sent. So for the next three hours, my mouth was kind of just hanging open for the rest of the day. And then I got. And then I got home. And God did what he does. He said, now let's talk about what I don't do. Because you told me a year ago that I don't give people free cars. See, you don't understand what I have done to myself. 
That's why I get emotional. Because I ran away from God for decades of my life. Not willing to do what he asked me to do. And he still keeps on blessing me. Because there's power in his name. My mama taught me how to pray even if I didn't feel like it, even though I was angry. No matter what happened, she said, baby, you pray no matter what. And so even though her bonehead of a son had the audacity to tell the most high God what he didn't do, my God said, let me show you something else. Boom. Yeah, the car's old. Yes, it looks like the color of grass. And I don't care because I ain't got a payment. See, in running away from my Savior's name, I racked up over $250,000 worth of debt. Yes, a quarter of a million dollars of disobedience. I'm keeping it real because I told him as long as I live, I'm going to tell him what you've done for me. I don't care how idiotic it makes me seem. Yes, because the Lord saves dummies. Here's one. And he keeps on blessing because there's power in his name. He has the authority to say, even though you got on your knees, told me what I don't do, I still have the authority and the position in the universe to take a car from here and plop it down there for free 99. Now, how do you like those apples, James? And that's nothing. We've, we've heard the stories, we've seen it. People have seen cancer disappear by the power of the name. People have gotten out of the grave because of the power of the name. Lazarus, they saw him. They couldn't handle it. And that's one of the reasons why they killed Jesus, because there was too much power in his name. When you pray, you go down on your knees expecting God to do something. And even if he tells you no, it's because those guardrails are up there protecting you from those sharks in the water. And so you say, God, I'm opening up everything. And if you say no, I thank you for your no. Because there's something coming later. Notice I didn't get this blessing a month later, a week later, two months later. It was a full year after I said the prayer. Somebody has been giving up on their prayer. Don't you do that. Because there's power in his name. He's a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. It's not an incantation. There's power in the name. We don't just splatter the name of Jesus just to end it like we say sincerely on an email. No, there's power in his name. Power so much that when he says, let there be light, that light comes out of nowhere with no sun, moon, or stars. Oh, nature obeys the name. Think about that. Water separates and obeys the name. Trees and grass come out of the ground because they obey the name. Because there's power in the name. I don't want anyone in this room or watching online to miss out on the power available to you in your prayer. We must be upgraded from the prayers of a little child that God listens to, but you and I have been around for a lot longer. The children need to see people that believe in the power that resides in his name. They need to see a group of people who, even when they are in tears, they still trust in the name. Because when we believe in the name, we have life. 
So no matter what happens to us, no matter what we go through, we've got life. And that's where your hope is. Because even though the devil tried to stop you, he can't because you're in the power of the name. So when you are called by that trump that sounds, that corruptible will put on incorruptibility. It will put on immortality. And you will be caught up to meet him if you are still alive at the moment that he remain, that he comes. You will see your Savior and not explode face to face. You will be able to give him a hug physically and feel his heartbeat and yours match up because there's power in the name. You will be able to touch that beautiful side that was pierced for you because there's power in the name. He told them, I have the power to lay my life down and I have the power to take it up again. Nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down voluntarily. He did it for us. He didn't take any shortcuts. He did it for real. But there's power in his name. And that's why he wasn't so silly as to get off of the cross when the devil tempted him and said, ah, if you are the son of God, well, then come on down and we'll believe you. He didn't need to prove anything because love was hanging cruciform because there's power in the name. And even when his father had to turn his back on him because my sin, there was still power in selfless love because Jesus couldn't not be who he is, which was pure love. It's power in his name. God is love, and he always has been, and he always will be. And he holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And when you got keys to your little busted Toyota, I can get in and drive that thing. You can't drive my car. You probably don't want to, and I don't care, because I don't have a payment. And you know what? You didn't pay for your freedom either. You didn't. God gives you keys that you didn't pay for, because he did it for you already. He let them crucify him. He let them spit in his face. But there was power in the name. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't get down off the cross. He stayed there for me. Thank you, Jesus. He can't be ripped off of his throne. His throne, there's a seat called mercy. And so when he is putting those specks of blood on the horn, He's got his family member in mind. He's not pleading before the father like someone who doesn't have access. Oh, father, please save this little dummy over here. Please, please save him. No, he's like, he's in my name. He's part of the family. Next. He's there for me and you because there's power in the name. And resurrection power. That means the price has been paid, but I also have access to new life. And I'm not just waiting for heaven for that new life because I've upgraded. My life starts now. There is someone in the building who has not yet made the decision to tell people whose name they walk with, whose name that they are in, whose name they trust in, by going down into the watery grave. 
I need you to make that decision now. I need you to just do it. I need you to go. I need you to make the arrangement for baptism. You can talk to the pastor. You can talk to the elders. I need you to do that today. I don't need to manipulate or anything, nothing. I just need you to get it done because there's power in the name and you need to be a part of the team, okay? We need more people to be a part of the team. So just do it, okay? Just do it. Show that you believe in the name publicly. Make it wet all up and through here, all right? Next thing, there is someone who has been walking a little bit slow in getting their membership transferred to Myrtle Beach. Do it. Do it today. We're going to be here. A lot of us are going to be here a lot of the day. Get the information. If you look in your bulletin, there is an email that you can email Sister Lynn Malcolm. Get, get it in there. Get it in there. There's some of you who've been thinking about studying the Bible. Stop thinking and do it. OK, there is a new believers class here. There's also a, the pastor will let you know how to get started with Bible studies. But let's not just keep living in the I know I should. OK, let's not let's not keep living in that. And I want to do something. Uh, if you want to get baptized and, and you're you're in that valley of decision or whatever, I just want you to come and sit right there. We are going to bow our heads and close our eyes, and we're going to do a couple of things. There are some people right now, you may be baptized, you may have given your life to the Lord, but you have not been accessing the power that is in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. And there is something that you've been needing, something that you have given up for, and I need you to start believing right now. So as we close our heads, bow our, cl close our heads, as we close our eyes and bow our heads, we are going to pray seriously in the power of the name. And if you want to be baptized, I want you to walk down here. If you want special prayer, if you want to, uh, even change your membership and you just want something, just come and sit right here. Nobody's going to judge you. Don't think about others. Think about what Jesus did for you on the cross, hung, exposed, and cruciform. Think about that as you walk here. Let's everybody bow our heads and close our eyes. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of my Savior. There's power access. There's power and life for you. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of my Savior, there's power and access, there's power in my Savior's name. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master. Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Won't you come? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven
and earth proclaim that kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name kings and kingdoms kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name heavenly father we come to you this afternoon time and we say we're sorry for not believing in the power of your name because it's filled with so much access and holiness and richness and, and, and just everything we need and we've just, we've squandered what you've given us. Lord, forgive me for having the audacity to tell you what you won't do. Help me to remember what you have done and what you continue to do. I'm praying now for everyone under the sound of my voice, someone online, someone in the building, someone who's come forward, Lord. We need your power, the power that resides in your name. We need to be inside the strong tower that has creative power to recreate our hearts anew. Give us soft hearts to your Holy Spirit. Lord, some of us need a breakthrough financially. And we've been trying to do it on our own. But right now, I'm praying for those people that there is power in your name to give us wisdom as to what we should do. Lord, there is someone who needs a healing. And I'm praying the power of Jesus' name on their body. Lord, there is someone who has a wayward child who is swimming in sin. Lord, I ask that you send your life preserver out and rip them from the hands of the enemy by the power of the name. Let us not give, out, give, give up on our wayward children, Lord. Help those parents and grandparents to keep coming to your throne of grace. Father in heaven, there are people who know that there is someone next door across the street in the cul-de-sac who they need to speak to about the power of the name. Give them holy confidence, a gift basket, a present, something to open the door to make a friend for the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, there's a child who's scared to be a Christian because of the other kids. Lord, give them power in your name to not care about being made fun of because they have authority in your name. Lord, we need you in a mighty way. We can't do this on our own. We need to be baked in your spirit. We need to be overflowing with his power. Lord, whatever I have failed to ask, please do not fail in granting. Lord, we love you. We're so grateful that you care and you have long suffering in your nature. I thank you so much for doing miracles for people who don't deserve it. And Lord, as long as you continue to be patient with us, we will continue to dwell in your house as long as we can. Keep us in the cross. In Jesus' name we trust. Amen. In the cross. In the cross, my glory 
Till my ransom soul. My ransom soul shall find rest beyond the river. We've been with Jesus today, amen. amen. We're not done being with Jesus. But we are done for this section together. And I pray that you'll marinate on what the Lord has given you. Don't rush out of this place and start another conversation. Don't let the devil strip what he's given you today. As I ask the pianist to play, we're going to ask the deacons to come up and dismiss you. But stand as I give you your final blessing. As the Lord has given us as part of his name. The name of Jesus means Yahweh saves. Mm. Yahweh is God's personal name. So in the name of Yahweh, may he bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you. And grant you well-being, grant you his peace, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.